name's Emily and I'm a traveling business owner. Over the last five years or so, I've really intentionally made travel a big part of my life and I've lived in five different countries. So today I wanted to share with you the five things that travel has taught me. If you love travel, if you want to hear more about my travels, then don't forget to subscribe. Ironically, the first thing that I learned is that it's okay not to travel solo. Now, the reason that I don't always travel solo isn't because I'm lonely, isn't because I'm not okay with being alone. Actually, for many years, I really pushed solo travel and told myself that I needed to travel more by myself to be braver, to be more independent. And at a certain point, that just got damaging. Of course, I was still traveling for the, the joy of meeting new people. When I was traveling solo, I really found it easier to connect with new people when I was by myself without the comfort blanket of my friends around me. But I guess somewhere along the way, I got confused and forgot that being independent doesn't mean that you don't need people. Humans need people, we just do. It doesn't make me any less independent. So while I kind of knew how important it was to have people around you, and even when I traveled solo, I loved to meet new people, I learned to really value those deeper connections. And yes, traveling with someone else or traveling with a group might mean that you need to compromise on a few things, but it adds something that you can't get from solo travel, which is sharing experiences with people that you're really close to. I'm a competent problem solver and other people don't have it more figured out than I do. When I first moved to France, I failed so many times to try and open a bank account and I just remember being in tears, I had a cry. But then I went and I asked for some help from people and then I went out and tried again and this time I met some really nice people in the bank who were really helpful and helped me to open my account. When I was in Marrakesh, I got completely horribly lost in the Zouks, which are the, the winding streets in the middle of the Medina. I was staying in the middle of the Zouks and I got completely lost, didn't know how to find my way back to my hostel. So I took a deep breath, I went and I got some lunch, and I tried again, and I worked out by power of deduction how to get back to my hostel. When I lived in Italy, I was completely overwhelmed. I was working two new jobs, I was in a new culture, working in a different language, and I was completely eaten up by anxiety that I was gonna do something wrong at work. I overcame that, I met those deadlines, I overcame the learning curve in the new job, and I really thrived in that working environment. And I think that was the moment when it clicked for me that through all of these problems, which are very normal in life, wherever you are, each time I've managed to find a solution and I can overcome this. If you've got some level of intelligence, then you are a problem solver. You can find a solution to your problems, and the biggest thing here is that that's exactly what everyone does. Other people don't have it more figured out than you do. Just a side note, when I was working those two new jobs, I did burn out pretty hard, so I wouldn't recommend that one, but I did overcome it. After being lost for half an hour, I just came out of this little winding road, and I was by my house. <laughs> Sometimes risks don't pay off, at least not as you expected, but it's still better to try. So my boyfriend and I are both fairly anxious people and when we went to Albania this summer, we rented out this little Fiat, which let's just say it wasn't always super suited to the less than little Fiat friendly roads that you found in some places in Albania. The road surface could be very tricky and some of them just weren't possible for us. So on one of our days in Albania, we really wanted to go and visit this beach. The problem was the turn off for the beach was on the bend on a very busy road in the middle of the mountains. And we were stopping having a coffee beforehand looking at Google Maps. And we almost convinced ourselves that the road surface wasn't gonna be suitable for our car. Our car wouldn't be able to handle it. It was a rental car. Were we gonna have to pay a load of money to get rescued? And the worst bit was, because it was on this bend, we couldn't go check it out, and once we turned down the road, it looked like it was just too narrow to turn around and change our minds. We almost convinced ourselves not to go at all, but I'm so glad that we took the risk, because when we did go there, it was super narrow, but the road was okay, and even if it hadn't have been possible, we would have found a way out safely. And the beach was one of the most beautiful places we'd been to. It's all about taking calculated, measured risks. Don't risk your life and do something stupid. And then a few days later, we found a road that our car really couldn't pass. So what we did instead was we just pulled over and enjoyed the views where we were. Take smart risks, and if it doesn't work out, enjoy where you find yourself anyway, and just be proud of yourself that you tried. Let go of control. I love to be in control, and I don't mean that I have to have every single second of my life planned out, 
but I like to know what's going on and I like to be able to change what's going on and have agency in my life. But the thing is that that's not always compatible with normal day-to-day -day life, let alone when you're in a brand new country or a foreign place that you don't know much about. Like I said, when we were in Albania, we had to change our plans a lot because we just didn't have enough information available to us before we actually got there to always plan things. So one day that actually meant postponing arriving at our hotel because it was just too dangerous to drive the mountain route that we needed to for the extra hour before we arrived because it was already dark and it was a very dangerous road. So time and time again, I'm reminded of this in my personal life, in my travels, in my business that I can control the things that I can control to the best of my ability. And then the rest of it, I just have to do the best I can do in the moment and use those problem solving skills when something goes wrong. And I don't want to lie to you and say, ah, oh, but the unanticipated things are always the most beautiful because sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're really shitty. Sometimes it can be really expensive. Sometimes it can be really painful and you can suffer. This isn't a super emotional example, but when I moved to Italy, um, in order to get my residency papers, there ended up being 400 euros, which I hadn't anticipated that I had to pay in order to be legally able to stay and work there. And at the time I was freshly graduated, 400 euros was a lot. And that wasn't a beautiful thing in life, that was shitty at the time. But what I will say is that from these unanticipated moments, we do get a chance to learn from our mistakes, to grow, to be put in discomfort and outside of our comfort zones because that really is where you learn and where you become, you're given the opportunity to become a better person. And number five is turning big dreams into big goals. And it sounds super cheesy, but before I really started to spend significant amounts of time abroad, I didn't see that another way of life was possible. And once I realised that and I saw people who were living such different lives to the ones that I felt like I was expected to live, something clicked in my brain and I thought, I can design the kind of life I want and I have agency and I can make these decisions. And that really gave me the confidence to believe that anything was possible. When I lived in Italy for six months, that gave me the confidence that even though I had to go back to the UK, I could actually put a plan into place of how I was going to move to Italy. And actually, even when I did move to Italy, I didn't fully know how it was going to work out. But I had this idea that I was going to move there after graduation, I was going to start freelancing in social media. And sure enough, 12 months later, I was making a living from being a social media manager, freelancing with one of the top agencies in the area of Italy I was living in. I was offered a job as a social media manager. One of my big goals has always been to work freelance in the world of social media and do that while I'm living abroad and traveling. Earlier this year, I decided that I wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro and make a documentary about it. And at a certain point, it switched in my head and I stopped making it an idea, a dream, and I started putting down a plan to make it into a goal and a reality. And now I'm here taking calls with brands to help to sponsor this project. So I'm definitely continually learning. I'm continually making mistakes. I'm not perfect, but my skills have come along so long in having an idea, making it a reality. And the biggest lesson I've learned there is that if I have a dream, if I have an idea, I have the power to make that my reality and to put a plan in place to make it happen. This is a little bonus tip and something I wanted to throw out there. Travelling does not make you more enlightened. I'm definitely a big advocate of travelling for understanding what the world is like in different places, learning about the world, learning how different people live. But it does not make you a better person. But I still see travel as a tool to help you to learn all of these things, to gain knowledge, to gain self-awareness. And equally, I've met a lot of people with access to these tools, people who have been able to travel to places in the world that I haven't seen yet and are far more well-traveled than I am. But to my mind, they're still close-minded, they're still ignorant. And it just really highlights the fact for me that yes, travel will always be an amazing tool, but that's all it is. Some people aren't gonna become more self-aware from travel. Some people are still gonna be close-minded and ignorant. And I'm very aware of the fact that not everyone, whether it's due to economy or politics, the passport that you have, might not be able to travel now or ever. And it doesn't make you 
a worse person for not being able to travel. I hope that's really obvious. And as much as I advocate for travel, I think that there are so many other ways that you can also gain the self-awareness, gain the knowledge and understanding of the world. So read, be curious, ask people questions, talk to people in different places. Anyone who thinks that they're better because they've traveled, um, probably aren't worth your time. So I hope that you enjoyed those five life lessons that I have learned from travel. I snuck a sneaky sixth one in there, but it was really difficult to pick just five and I could definitely go into a lot of others, but that will be for another video. What I really want to know is what is the biggest lesson that you've learned through travel? Or if you haven't traveled, what's something that you'd be really curious to learn about from traveling to a different place? I would love to chat to you in the comments about it and let's respond to each other and start a conversation. And as always, if you want to stay up to date with my trips, especially that one to Kilimanjaro that I was talking about, then please remember to subscribe and I will see you all in my next video. Have a great week, guys. <laughs> I don't know. That was like a kiss, but it kind of turned into like a salute. Ciao.